And there's the start of the game. Redlands back to Paolino. Takes a touch forward. Puts it forward early. Dealt with by the Wolves defence just. Lobbed forward. Wakefield. No, Armstrong, I should say. Jeski. Well done, Drew Jeski. Clipped forward. Paolino with the challenge. Ball away. Kres Beck playing up front in his normal position for the Brisbane Wolves this week. Yeah, they look like they've got a forward uh, three with uh, Beck and uh, Thorogood and Room playing off him. Wolves have definitely come here with their 4-3-3 uh, their standard for them these days to uh, looking to win this game against a um, injury depleted and out of form Redlands Devils. Absolutely, and uh, Redlands themselves, uh, I guess, uh, will uh, we'll want this local derby to um, to spur them into a better performance. Vroom, Vroom on the left, takes Arroyo on, around Paolino, yes, nearly, double teamed. Perfect opportunity to get, a, get on the board early. Ball whipped in, and oh, I think that was thorough good. Uh, probably the shortest player in the Wolves. Just taking his time, settling things down from the back yeah, at the, Redlands. The solution we had for that. Goal kick over the halfway line. I've just realised. I've just realised. One by Jeski. Yes, because then we realised that the Vroom. That we brought up a new, now I know what you're talking tries about. Tries to get. Oh, tries to get in Armstrong. Paolino with the throw in. Looking for yeah, yeah. Tom Lyons. Yeah, that's going to happen. Beck it's putting the pressure in on Paolino. Cameron, I'm moving on. Paolino Fine. doing well, and using his body well, camera. Anthony Paolino. And a goal kick that, to Redlands. Paolino coming out to the right hand side. Draper. Well, Draper uh, didn't get a touch there. Looked like he did. Paolino with the throw down on the right for the Redlands Devils. Paolino still with the throw. No options for Anthony Paolino. Lions looking for a touch for Draper. Interesting to see uh, Cameron Draper lining up on the uh, right-hand side of midfield. Uh, been playing at the back mainly as a, as a right back or a right wing back. So uh, see what he can do from an attacking point of view. <laughs> Draper always looks good when he goes forward. He uh, delivers a fantastic ball and uh, does works very hard uh, wherever he's playing for Redlands. Bulls just looking to uh, lob this forward by the looks of it. Yep, that is the plan. Beck, obvi the obvious target. Thorough good. No. Reardon dispossessed. Well, uh, nearly dispossessed. Ball cut out. Armstrong. Armstrong again. Jeski, Jeski with a fantastic ball through on the right, across the goals and well, it's gone out for a goal kick but that could have easily been uh, put to uh, Mitch O'Brien. Sam safe before the game, I was lucky to have to catch up and uh, Sasha Radulovic has uh, a flu and uh, cannot take partake in any sport until Tuesday, okay. so uh, bedridden and off work at the moment. Uh, Hayden Hayden Eames no has left the ball rolled it back for uh, Nevin, Nevin Soraya with the free kick looks like they'll probably go somewhere near the far post and float this in that's pretty much what they do and a touch by the Redlands attacker out for a goal kick yeah that should be the battle to watch I think today yes I think um, those two will have a a, a game a game or a battle for the whole game is what I was trying to get out and. Uh, Quick throw by the Wolves. 
looking for Joby Thorogood down that right channel. The Wolves do everything that they do at a fair pace. They don't give the other side a chance to settle, and that does unnerve some sides. Thorogood, good touch, Joby Thorogood. Plays it out wide. Throw into the Wolves. Slowly but surely building their way up down the right channel there on the far side. Could be, could be the long throw, I think. Uh, Leaning against the fence now, so I think this could be the long throw. Yep, it's, uh, well, an attempt at it anyway. Ball across, and uh, that's Mitch O'Brien, who didn't look particularly comfortable, didn't really look like he knew if he should come or go then. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely his. I mean, he took it within his own six-yard box, so, uh, yeah, it looked comfortable. And uh, that was Hayden Eames getting up over the top, referee uh, letting that one go, and fair enough. Back to Eames, Soroya, who could have sold his player short. Eames with a nice touch there. Ramon close, dispossessed, turned into his man. Good challenge out wide there by Kresbeck. Yeah, good, uh, good start from uh, both sides. I think um, obviously it's a cold night and um, the quickest way to warm up is uh, by uh, expending some energy and doing a lot of running. So uh, expect to see uh, an end-to-end -end game. Caden Newell there with the throw from uh, Reddins. I think uh, Newell will be probably lining up for another one here on the, on the far side of the Cleveland showgrounds. It is actually Caden Newell with the throw. A bit of a nothing throw from Newell on that occasion. Ball lobbed forward to Beck. Chris Beck uh, failing to get a, a, a touch on that one. Danny Byrne takes the ball down. Facing away, Beck. Again, Chris Beck's touch. Well, he's picked up a free kick off Soroya. But I think that was more of a case of uh, Chris Beck not having a very good touch the first time. Yeah, that's what Sam Sayofil want, uh, want his uh, big man up front to do, is uh, win those free kicks, uh, create some set-piece opportunities. And, um, you know, I think uh, that we have seen danger, uh, Wolves being dangerous from those set-pieces. Armstrong with the ball into the middle. It's, um, well, Paolino ended up jumping by himself. Reardon uh, didn't quite get his touch right. Morales... Reardon, Armstrong, Vroom, Vroom, great touch Stefan Vroom, was he brought down after the ball had gone? He's called a penalty, I think you'll find that uh, the referee, yes, card to Mitch O'Brien, he took um, Stefan Vroom late after he played the ball into the far, or tried to, played into the far corner. Yeah, you don't often see those given. You normally, when uh, the player gets a uh, touch on it, to walk old goalkeepers do around the world. <laughs> referees describe. I think, I suppose, the referees uh, describing what a penalty is to the players. Armstrong still waiting to take his kick. Steps in, and well finished by Armstrong. That's his first goal of the. That's his fourth of the season, and um, we'll uh, conceded and. Um, and yeah, probably uh, Wolves very happy that they've already broken uh, broken through. Paolino out to Draper. Draper cuts inside. Very good, mate. Just get there, now. Soroya sees it. Uh, shepherds it back to Mitch O'Brien. Draper with his a good first touch. Being hassled by Armstrong, Draper with good touch, plays it forward to Byrne, Armstrong nicks in, Jeske, Reardon, all the way home back to Houghton, Houghton floats it forward for Beck, Soroya, well up, Nevin Soroya. Ramon Close on the inside gives the ball away again. Ramon Close, it's a couple of times in a row. Great challenge in there by Drew Jeske and uh, throw in to Caden Ewell on the far side for Redlands Devils. Oh, 
Thorogood, uh, really, no chance against the tall Nevin Soroya. Yeah, Soroya's going to win that all day, um, but they'll be looking for the ball up to Chris Beck instead. Draper, well around Armstrong, the goal scorer. Got each other's road there, the Wolves players. They, could have, they had an opportunity to get that up early. Armstrong, over the ball. Oh, plays it square, gets away with it. Reardon. No. Yeah, yeah, Nathan Reardon didn't really um, go for that as if he thought he was going to get, uh, it was going to come to him and um, wasted opportunity there. Lines mixed up there from Caden Ewell and uh, Danny Byrne. Danny Byrne running the other way. Jeski. Jeski, oh, looking to put Vroom away. Timely header by Anthony Paolino. Newell up to Ramon Close. In for Hayden Eames. Hayden Eames spreads it wide. Great ball out to Nathan Draper. Draper inside. Eames up to Lyons. Lyons first touch, not quite up to it there at the moment. Wolves floats one over the top. Stefan Vroom. Anthony Paolino does very well under those circumstances. Poor clearance by Mitch O'Brien. JB Thorogood, 40 metres out. Challenged by Anthony Paolino. Oh, well, referees found a foul in that. Yeah, definitely a foul. And um, I was going to say a sensible, um, sensible foul. Uh, Redlands just needed to compose themselves. And I don't know if Paolino is about to go in the book or, or just get a talking to. Just a talking to, I think. Of his, uh, of his path just to uh, block the run. But again, another set piece opportunity. With that, Stefan Vroom uh, taking the place of the dangerous Sasha Radulovic. And that's taken a touch, and uh, that's a corner ball. That, uh, that deflection could have been very dangerous for the Redland side. Yeah. Seems to be working for the Wolves. Ball, ball swept in, uh, cleared, well, hoofed anywhere by the Redlands defence at this stage. Mara, uh, yeah, Paul Mickler there being uh, challenged by Tom Lyons and um, Sam Sife would be happy to have his uh, captain back and uh, rock at the, the back. be interesting to see how uh, McCoola's confidence is on his uh, injured knee. We've got an offside call. I thought Danny Byrne was in there. Crossfield ball for uh, Stefan Vroom. Vroom takes it. Draper and Paolino around him. He goes past both of them. Well done. Well done, Stefan Vroom. Wakefield. Wakefield with the wall again. Jeski. Drew Jeski. Armstrong. Sorry, Reardon. McCoola. And in the end, uh, a wasted long distance shot there from Paul McCooler. And I guess uh, hold on to possession and uh, it seems to have rocked Redlands. Uh, and confidence is obviously a problem at the moment. And they, they would have wanted to start start quickly, but uh, instead it was Wolves with the lead. Yeah, th that, uh, that one goal, at the, the fact that it conceded first could be the difference. And Vroom um, takes Paolino on for pace. I think he could, well, well defended by Anthony Paolino and Draper comes in as a second defender. Well defended by Redlands United there. Hayden Eames back out to Draper. Paolino goes long. Wakefield, uh, Wakefield on the ball with a bit of time. Plays it up the line straight to Nathan Draper. Um, Sam Saif not happy with his defect left fullback. Jeski, thorough good, dispossessed by Soroya again. Uh, Nevin Soroya seems to have Joby Thoroughgood's measure just at this stage of the game. Yeah, Thoroughgood will be uh, trying to operate off the scraps, and um, yeah, you're not gonna, he's not gonna win a physical battle with uh, Soroya, but he might win uh, one of speed. Referees found another foul. Uh, neither side look 100% sure what that was for. Yeah, suddenly uh, Wolves are playing a really pressing, strong pressing game and trying to win, uh, force a, an errant pass and um, 
work on the transition and uh, hit hit Redlands um, with uh, on the counter as soon as they give it away. Ball out uh, for Ramon close on the far side or in the far corner as we as we stand here at the school board at the Cleveland Showgrounds. It, the score is 1-0 to the visitors, Brisbane Wolves in all white, and against the home side, Redlands United in the all red strip. Yeah, dangerous position, both these players quite capable. Looks like it's going to be Burn. Burn with the shot, and Houghton down well at his near post and uh, held, that, held that well. Slows it down, lets the players all get back into space. Goes long, does Andrew Houghton. Beck, the target man of, from the long ball, Chris Beck. Joby Thorogood, um, the judge not to have left a foot in on uh, Soroya, who's remained down. And, oh, the ball nearly pokes through by Beck for Vroom. Uh, perfect, perfect example there. He's, uh, I think he's played in six games, uh, one as a sub, uh, and started five. Wolves just giving the ball back to Redlands in a, in a show of sportsmanship, which has become the norm now in the world game. Yeah, it's some you know you see sometimes uh, people clap for it. Uh, it's more a case of booing if they don't do it. Very much so. And uh, Thorogood again finding a little bit of space, and uh, Soroya uh, seems to be his marker today. Crestbeck, a judge to have clipped uh, Soroya. Uh, can't didn't didn't see Crestbeck complaining too much about that decision. No, I, way they've side of playing just at this given moment. Yeah, I think uh, Sam probably feels that um, Redlands are here for the taking and, and wants his side to do everything they can not to uh, squander this one 0 lead. The uh, Redlands are definitely battling hard. Well, both sides are battling hard. Something that we'd expect from a derby of this magnitude. Uh, the Redlands, Winham, well, the Redlands Wolves. Derby is one of those, and it's a shot from Danny Byrne from distance. Four playing against three strikers, they really need Eames or Saeed just to drop and uh, help support that, that back four. Yes, they, they look like they're being just a touch stretched by the three-man attack. But uh, Cade Newell does well there, stoops very low to get his header back to his goalkeeper. Makes it easy for Mitch O'Brien, who plants it long up towards Ramon Close. Ball cut side. Once again, still as it remains, 1-0 to the visitors of Brisbane Wolves over Redlands United here at the Cleveland Showgrounds on this Round 12 catch-up match in the Vito Premier League. It's Beck used as a target man and uh, Thorogood and Vroom are hoping to uh, pick up a lot from, uh, from Chris. Yeah, they've, um, the beauty of their squad is they can change shape and still be very effective. And uh, Redlands, touched by Lions, burn! Oh, good save. No, offside Offside flag went up. Offside flag went up very late, Stuart. Yeah, very late, but um, I, I think the uh, I think that's where Paul Mikula and comes in and gives that experience and had his uh, back four moving up at the right time. Well done by uh, Anthony Paolino. He's, uh, he's won that challenge. Well, Lions in hard. Armstrong in hard as well. 50-50, oh, I thought there, but the referee again, closer than I am, Stuart. Yeah, he's not letting much go today. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully that'll change and we'll get a more free-flowing game. Ball played long for close. Seems to be their preferred outlet at the moment is to play the ball onto the far side into the channel for close. But uh, Saeed, back to Caden Newell. Aimless ball into the middle, easily dealt with, but again, given away by the Wolves' defence. Where um, Paul McCooler giving the ball away twice, uh, uncharacteristically. Yeah, it's going to take him uh, some minutes to uh, to recover. Lions! Oh, great save by Andrew Houghton. That came from absolutely nothing then. Across the face again. That's come off the, the side of the defender's head. And eventually it's lobbed away from the Wolves' goal. But not far with Ramon close back in. And uh, oh, Tom Lyons, well, he's unlucky. He's almost scored twice there, and uh, both times good shots, and uh, they keep Andrew Howden up to it. 
Yes, Andrew Houghton, uh, good hands on both occasions. Uh, good ball, good win in the air. Ball into the corner for Redlands. And uh, Wakefield will go back and collect that without any trouble at all. Better signs from Redlands, uh, looking a little bit more dangerous now. Um, and uh, looking like uh, they're going to be give uh, Wolves a really good game here. Ball down the line, Kresbeck can't get in front. Anthony Paolino has done uh, very well on all the players he's marked tonight. He's marked a few. And uh, Beck, Beck, oh, Chris Beck only had to lay that through the gap and uh, Wolves were, I think it was Reardon, was away one on one. Oh, th Joby Thorogood in behind, can he get around his defender? No, five too strong, looks to play it up the line for Paolino, but clears the danger. Brian Bridge showing his class twice then, a great tackle and then great physical uh, presence. Draper, Nick didn't and stole the ball back. McCoola, McCoola, still going, Paul McCoola. Probably just, probably just a free kick there, Stuart. Yeah, yeah. Danny Byrne uh, complaining to the referee there, wanting the, uh, wanting the advantage to be played. Um, in the previous phase, we saw uh, again Redlands turning the ball over. Um, Saib actually trying to take that quickly in the former Brisbane Wolves man. Um, Row seven season where they just narrowly stayed in the Brisbane Premier League. Ball across and uh, well defended. Hout looked just a little bit uh, slow to come off his line then. Beck, back to Armstrong, I believe that was. Houghton will take his time here. Plays it long, up to Beck. Gets a, gets a bit of a shove by Paolino, but strong enough to ride it. Plays it way too long, Kres Beck. Did all the hard work and then uh, let the uh, good work get undone by a, a poor final ball. Yeah, Paulino's playing very well. I mean, he's, he's playing it right back, essentially, but uh, he, he seems to be involved in anything through the middle as well and um, having to cope with the pace he's thorough at the moment. He's, uh, he's, he's, I think he's marked about four players as a, so far this half, he, and he's done a good job on all of them. Uh, Soroya just plays that short. Cl uh, Hayden Eames into Danny Byrne. Danny Byrne, oh, as always, gets some space, clips it across. Draper. Draper takes it on his chest and uh, doesn't keep Redlands Devils nil here at the Cleveland Showgrounds. And Beck does well against two. Thorogood. Thorogood and Armstrong not quite getting their lines together there. Danny Byrne under pressure from Jeski and Armstrong. Saeed. Well, Sabre runs right back into the danger spot and actually over his own player. That's, um, Blanche, that's the second time the referee's pulled, pulled it back when the, the team uh, he's giving the free kick to has got the ball uh, looking to attack the other way. I think he's happy with Saeb's attitude at the moment. I think he thinks that he's a little bit over the top. Too industrious, maybe, is the word that um, I'm looking for. Probably not, though. Wakefield being told to take the free kick from where the offence happened. Yeah, um, the referee looks a little, little bit wet behind the ears and for a, a local rivalry, um, maybe you'd, you'd want someone with a little bit more experience, but um, uh, he's, uh, he's calling everything at the moment. He's not, making, he's not made a decision which has affected the game as such as yet, so, oh, great challenge by Beck, and uh, that, um, that was... That was, well, that was only a free kick if it was that. That was a commentator's curse, wasn't it? He's not made a decision that's changed the game. And then um, it just appeared that Mitch O'Brien just lost his footing. Um, obviously, a Wolves play was in the vicinity and he's given a free kick. <laughs> Long ball by O'Brien. Easily taken care of. Jeski. At the thorough good. Gets the better of Paolino this time, uses his body well, looks for his pace, does ride the challenge, get, gets his head up, cuts it back, Paolino tracking back well, bridge, and uh, cut out by uh, Armstrong. Bridge with the throw, Jeski, bridge, Draper, well turned Cameron Draper, well played in a tight spot, Tom Lyons, Hayden Eames, Hayden Eames out to Ramon Close on the far left, swips it in, Jeski gets there just before his marked man, Soroya, 
Looks like it'll be a bit of a grabbing session in the middle of the park there. I think uh, the referee let go for some reason. Stefan Vroom now out on the right. Inside. Return ball didn't quite meet its mark. And a throw in on the far side. The back force, um, back to back to a uh, first choice back four and um, they're going to have a real stiff test with uh, Ramon Close, uh, Danny Byrne and Tom Lyons tonight and um, it could be a good momentum builder if they, if they manage to keep them out. Well I think uh, their, their first goal I suppose is to maintain a clean sheet which will be difficult. Draper, Draper's got onto this from behind, that's an absolutely great ball and great run by Nathan Draper. Danny Byrne but Burns receiving this ball about 35, 40 metres out from goal and you want him receiving the ball a lot closer than that Wolves have dispossessed him Armstrong Armstrong looks for Vroom Newell with the header Paolino who was playing at right fullback as you say seems to be playing a floating role does Anthony Paolino Saeed looking in the middle Reardon with a touch Oh, Keith Armstrong looked like he was just, he, he landed not very friendly to himself on that occasion. Yeah, Redden's not getting too much time in midfield. They're, they're hitting it early out to Close and uh, Cameron Draper. And um, really, yeah, I think the uh, the three in the middle for, for Wolves are having a pretty good game so far. Definitely, they're controlling it at the moment. Lions out to Close. Closer. Looks to drive the ball in. Ricochets to Tom Lyons, ends up being a good ball, more by luck than design. Saib outside, right, lobs the ball in, and uh, well, I think that was a cross, but ended up uh, making uh, Andrew Houghton in the Wolves goal backpedal. Just to see Brisbane Wolves starting to gain a confidence that they probably are just starting to get over the top of Redlands in the, the important parts of the field, which is the middle of the park. And uh, they're pushing forward. Vroom with the ball across. Disappointing ball by Stefan Vroom. Uh, you come to it. an attacking three. So, um, yeah, as you say, it puts uh, more of an emphasis on, on his crossing ability. Draper into Lions. Eames with the ball forward. Danny Byrne chasing. Good use of the body there. Lions comes in and picks it up again, though. Hayden Eames tries to go around Armstrong. Tom Lyons whips it across, and oh! Any touch in the middle there was a goal for Redlands, and uh, Wolves probably could consider themselves lucky in that situation there. Yeah, uh, it's the modern game that you, um, as a forward, you have to come out and help with the midfield, and that's what Tom Lyons did, and uh, it almost created the first goal. Wolves uh, look to get the ball out but maintain possession and uh, another free kick in the middle of the park a lot of stops and starts in this game so far in the first half especially in the middle of the park so I should add that I meant the first Redlands goal obviously Wolves lead here by a goal to nil Wolves starting to waste some of their balls uh, they've gone away from their close and short ball game to a bit longer and I think that's to their detriment uh, Paolino rides a couple of challenges Ryan Bridge put under pressure by Beck, uh, rides that challenge, and finally the pressure. And uh, throwing down the left for the Brisbane Wolves, Beck uh, wins the header, Jeski, Jeski again. Drew Jeske's won everything in front of him tonight. Reardon gets just a touch. And uh, Morales back to the keeper, then receives the ball back. Gives the ball straight away. And uh, not making Coach safe very happy at all. Danny Byrne lines up for the spectacular and has his pocket picked uh, by the returning defender. Paolino, poor touch. Joby Thorogood looked after again by Nevin Saroya. Danny Byrne tries to go around the outside. Morales again hoofs it up the park, but Saeed intercepts. Draper cuts in from the right. Danny Byrne. Danny Byrne trying to get around his man. 
looking for a free kick. Play on, says the referee. Linesman was only 10 feet away, so you would have thought the assistant would have given the call. Morales again, finally, gets the ball forward that isn't cut out by Saeed. Jeski. Ooh, strong challenge by Hayden Eames in the middle of the park. Mule with the header. Ryan Bridge. Five. Oh, yeah, that's okay. I was following. Reardon. No, sorry. Balk at Vroom. Vroom challenging. Vroom's won that back. Fantastic work, Stephen Vroom. Shoots across the keeper. Squares back. And out for a corner. Redlands failing to clear their lines. Nearly punished. Ultimately punished. The game is uh, being uh, played is that transition. Ball whipped in. Close, trying to atone, and Reardon just lobs the ball. Jeski, I should say, just lobs. Trying to um, sort of match his tally of eight goals that he scored in 2009. Jeski with the header. Very good. Keeps possession. Armstrong. Wakefield. Touched by Armstrong. Very good. Lobs it forward. Soroya with an important touch that. Jeski. Ramon Close could have got a touch then and diffused it. Got his feet in the wrong place. Vroom down the right. He's been dangerous. That looks like it could be rare. I thought there could have been a bit of holding there by Nevin Soroya. Yeah, pull up the shirt and uh, definitely. As well, so it looks to be an interesting sort of uh, free kick. Lobs it in, and uh, and that's a goal yes. to yeah. Thorogood. Joby Thorogood, I think, is going to claim the last touch, and uh, that's Brisbane Wolves 2, Redlands Devils 1 uh, nil here at the Cleveland Showgrounds, and uh, it's a long way back. Wanting to make sure, but he, he'll also enjoy notching his fourth goal of the season. Uh, strikers are like that. If they can see the opportunity, they certainly will take it. Redlands uh, back to... Paolino, Paolino, across to Soroya, Soroya out to Newell, looks a bit rushed, looks a bit clumsy and shut down by, shut down by uh, Vroom and then Caden Newell pulled up by the referee for a challenge, would have thought that if he was going to pull that type of challenge up he would have had to have given a yellow card to it. Uh, before the, the end of the first half. Jeski. Back out. This will get. This will come floating in. In it comes. Thorogood at the far post, and Joby Thorogood has out jumped Paolino, and it's been called a goal kick. Uh, okay. Again, we'll say that the uh, officials are in better positions than we are, but it looked a lot like a corner to me. Yeah, not not too much complaining there. Uh, we're we're late on in the the first half. Uh, Wolves leading by two goals. So now the um, Keith Armstrong scoring from a penalty, and uh, that goal from Thorogood uh, a couple of minutes ago. Anywhere will do for Wolves just at this second. They uh, they seem for whatever reason to have lost their composure, which is a bit strange to think. Reardon with a with a heavy touch. Newell. Looking for closer up the sideline, but uh, again, just gives it away. Good ball down the right. Caden Newell, uh, again, we were talking about Paolino in the foot. Uh, uh, you know, uh, having a right winger to deal with. And uh, Soroya eventually, some would say, has gone into the book for a, uh, a crude foul. Uh, end of it as a contest uh, for uh, free kicks in this play in these sort of positions. It's Armstrong over the ball. He'll be looking for, for Beck or Jeski. Brings it in, and there goes Jeski. Oh. And uh, as as called by the commentary team, uh, the true, true, prude, and tr tr should say true and tried uh, free kick from Brisbane Wolves nearly worked again but uh, as you said if Redlands continue to give away free kicks in those dangerous positions Wolves will benefit uh, with a third goal Beck gets it back it's a, that's a fair good piece of work and just over hits the cross unfortunately Krez Beck uh, Draper 
here on the near side. Back to Anthony Paolino. Thoroughgood with the uh, pressure and uh, ball straight out by Anthony Paolino. Uh, that's Wolves as you'd expect them to play. Absolutely. We're, uh, we're getting on late in the half and... Uh, this is just about survival for Redlands at the moment. Let's get, you know, they'll be saying, let's get the half time and um, we we'll see where we go from there. Hayden Eames has done very well in the middle of the park. He's played the ball to Lyons, who's played it back, and then he's played a glorious ball out to Ramon Close. No, sorry, it's rolled away from him. Uh, it was the right idea, but um, probably to put... Oh, very close to the end of the first half. Just taking their time now. No, nothing rushed. They're happy to go to the, go to the half time break here at the Cleveland Showgrounds. Two goals to the good and um, I'm sure that Sam Safe will be happy with that scoreline if uh, not all that happy with some of the things that uh, his side have been doing. Hand as attackers, which is, uh, well, which is commonplace, and, and if, you can, if you're happy to do that, if, it, if the players are good enough, it's a good, it's a good effort. Uh, again, Lions dispossessed. Jeski, a room, I should say. Draper. They've looked for that right, that inside right channel all night, Redlands. And to tell you the truth, to be honest, it hasn't worked for them yet. No, I think they're um, they needed they needed things to go their way this this half um, to give them some confidence. And uh, if anything, it's gone the other way. And that's half time here at the Cleveland Showgrounds, where the score is Brisbane Wolves two, Redlands nil, in this round twelve catch up. Vito Premier League match. Imagine um, we'll, we'll see a more attacking side in the second half. Wolves pretty much start the game off as they finished it in the first half. Harrying around, giving the Redlands players no no space, no time in the middle of the park. McCooler away with a confident header. Thoroughgood chasing that, uh, but realises the ball is going just to be a bit long for him. Paolino out on the right still for Redlands with the throw. Lions with the touch, but straight out of play. And again, uh, Redlands, I suppose, have gone back into straight away, getting, getting possession and giving it away cheaply. Yeah, um, I think that everything that Wolves is doing is uh, is trying to uh, stop Redlands having the ball and, and pressuring them as often as they can do and um, look for that to continue. Scrappy start to the second half, but again, players need to get their uh, legs moving in. Quite chilly here tonight. Vroom between two. Well done, Stefan Vroom. Has a shot and uh, just past the post. And uh, I do think that Mitch O'Brien had that covered, though. Yeah, I thought he had it covered, too. And then when it went past him, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, no cheers of delight. Doesn't seem to have a lot of movement ahead of him. Uh, and Lyons gets a good touch on. Morales does enough to break up the play. Wakefield does well. And then a uh, foul given away uh, to the displeasure of Nathan Draper. Yeah, um, Draper there on the um, on the right wing, I think probably that, that may be the, the switch that uh, ends up happening in the second half, is that he'll he'll end up going back to right back and uh, maybe 5-4 uh, in the middle come on. Vroom. And uh, Vroom already picked up the free kick. No, sorry, offside against Stefan Vroom. Again, I think that might be a late flag or is me just not looking yeah well, I, I actually thought it was a free kick to Wolves and I was uh, scratching my head to wonder why but uh, the uh, the alignment's just outside of our view so and another clearance by Mitch O'Brien well won by Wolves Vroom with the pressure and uh, I think he's won the throw yes he has uh, Redwood's looking for a free kick not getting one well, that's hit the back of Kres Beck and uh, turned over possession. Danny Byrne does well to ride the challenge. Hayden Eames. And once again, scrappy play in the middle of the park from both sides. That leads to a throw-in on the far side for Brisbane Wolves by Wakefield. Beck with the header on. 
Soroya doesn't quite get there, I think, yeah. He's been a judge to have handballed it. Be interesting to see what happens here. Uh, Soroya's already got a yellow card, just been booked, or just been pulled up for, must have been a deliberate handball. You would think that maybe if he hadn't have had the first one, he would have got a yellow for that one, Stuart. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Redlands actually have um, four players, uh, including Soroya, that are on um, one yellow card away from the suspension. So Soroya, now that he's actually back, is actually suspended for the next game. That's the last thing that Redlands really need. And the clearance from O'Brien to Lyons, not finding Danny Byrne. Saeed going through the middle hard. And uh, that... That's got to be very close to a second yellow card for Mitch O'Brien. I think that is his second yellow card and the Redlands keeper has been sent from the field. I would believe that's for handball outside the box. Maybe the uh, replay will show that later on. Yeah, I need to see that again because I, I, I didn't see much, much in that. I think um, he uh, tried to make the clearance and uh, the ball then rebounded into him. I don't think there was much he could do about it. Um, that's we talked we talked at the end of the second half about you know things needing to go Redlands away and really they haven't had any luck um, so um, we're about to see the uh, sub keeper come on um, which is uh, Jared uh, O'Neill Jared O'Neill coming on to replace the well red card and two yellow cards to Mitch O'Brien there'll have to be a substitution from the field so we did Bannon and Thorogood are talking about um, uh, who um, they can actually uh, bring off, and I think Ramon Close is going to be the one that, that makes way. It's an interesting one there. They really, really need to do that quickly because the the referee could say that they haven't got, they haven't actually got the substitute ready, um, and could actually let the game go on. Would be a brave referee, I'm afraid, in the Brisbane leagues. I mean, uh, but the rule is in place. He could, if he could, if he deemed it a time wasting. The situation. The Redlands bench certainly took their time in deciding who it was to come off and uh, Close was the, the man who made way. We've got Stefan Vroom. I think it'll, you'll find Stefan Vroom will be... Uh, is it Stefan Vroom over this ball? I do believe it is. Uh, he's he's usually in, a, in attendance with Sasha Radulovic when balls are on this part of the park. Radulovic seems to get the lion's share of the free kicks for a reason, though. Yeah, Vroom will like uh, having the opportunity that, uh, that Radulovic isn't going to pull rank on him. And uh, steps out of the ball. He's quite capable. And it's oh, it's into the wall. And he... Was, he Gets it back. So well done by Stefan Vroom. He hasn't uh, he hasn't let the shot or the, and it's cut into the middle. Oh, it's uh, Jeski out to Armstrong. Sorry, Reardon clips it forward and out for a corner. This, uh, the change of shape in going down to 10 men, one would suggest that uh, Sam Safe may very well make his side or encourage his side to go forward now and attack and spread the ball, get wide and make them run. Uh, even though even though it's chilly, it's still, it's still Brisbane. Uh, you have to run around a bit and you get tired pretty quickly. I think uh, Sam will be thinking that, um, that he's not going to change anything about, about the way his team are playing. He's going to continue to press Redlands. I probably think that Redlands will just go to a 4-3-2 instead of a 4-4-2. Well, they've got to do something. Um, there's no point defending a 2 0 loss here, especially in the position they are on the table. So you'd expect them to come out and throw everything they've got. And uh, as, you, as we all seen before, in every league, in every country of the world, 10 men sometimes lift and uh, are harder to play against than 11 men. You probably see that Draper will play more centrally in the midfield and um, tuck in a bit to leave uh, two up front and uh, Lions and Burn will have to work all the harder. I think Redlands will, uh, will have to have a look at what they're doing. There's no point just hoofing the ball up the park because it's going to come back to them uh, just as quickly and it's going to stretch them if uh, the Wolves start playing the ball wide and spraying it wide. It's going to make the uh, Redlands team work so much harder. So once they've got possession, although the temptation is to get rid of it, uh, I think they're going to have to prize possession even more so now they're down to 10 men. 
absolutely uh, Parrish at the back there um, playing it out and they're trying to play it out the, the right way um, and, and that, that relies on Vernon and Martin's dropping in and making that midfield uh, midfield four again and, and I, I tell you um, I think uh, Hayden Eames and uh, and uh, the number 14 um, Matt Saib yeah I've got um, I've got a I've got hard uh, second half ahead of them they'll certainly uh, they'll be earning their match payments today Ball just lobbed forward just over Cresbeck and uh, Parrish deals with it at the Eames. Soroya, not the best of clearances. Reardon at the Armstrong, who's done, who's, who's done well. That's um, it's a waste. Oh, is it? Joby Sorigan back in. Cresbeck! Oh, Beck. Crosbeck should have done better there. That's something we've called. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, we're just taking it back here. Um, yeah, Chris Beck. Um, fantastic work from Thorogood actually at the the back post to keep it in play and uh, to put it through to Beck. And maybe Beck was as surprised as I was that he was given the opportunity from that from that closer range. He still has to score them, Stuart. Um, they're, they're, at the end of the season, you've, you've got to put those goals in the back of the net. They're the ones that would have... That goal would have killed off Redlands. That would have been it for Redlands. Down to 10 men, um, conceding what they would have considered a soft goal. Uh, would have been good strike. And uh, all the uh, replacement keeper not quite got his, um, not quite got his angles or his nerves gone yet. Uh, Hard ask for a young keeper to come in at this stage of a game. 2-0 down. Uh, oh, consider himself Mac lucky. McAvoy on the overlap here and uh, he's given some space. You can see what uh, Wolves are trying. Agree. The uh, corner coming in from the right. And uh, one again by a Wolves player by himself, Danny Byrne. Show some good experience and calmness there to play the ball back. Lyons will do well to keep anything out of this and uh, gets himself a throw. Tom Lyons, you're going to applaud that. He had three players around him and no support coming. Paolino. They, they're, they're making it hard for themselves, Redlands. They're, they're winning ball. They're getting some ball in reasonably good position. And they're giving it straight away. And they can't afford to do that uh, because Wolves are one of those sides that will punish you for those types of uh, basic errors. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, actually, Wolves... Um uh, they're, uh, they're doing enough to win the game. They're not doing enough for their coach. I think that's what they're, they're, they're playing against in the second half. Um, I, I think uh, Sal has a, an idea of the performance that his, his uh, side is capable of and he's going to need over the second half of the season to, um, to, to really push the, the top and second place teams. Cleared by Morales and uh, could, be, could be very well that uh, Redlands are going to have to maybe sneak one back through a set move. Having said that, uh, Brisbane Wolves are not only a side that scores a lot of goals from set moves, but they don't seem to concede a lot from set moves either. It's, uh, they seem to be well drilled in that verse of the game. We've um, actually, I think, going to have a sub coming up. I think uh, maybe Graham Fife or uh, Jesse Lindemann is, is coming on. I think it's Graham Fife. We'll, uh, we'll confirm that in a second. When we, uh, there is movement down on the line and uh, Danny Byrne rides a challenge free kick you can only assume for a late challenge uh, didn't see it I'm afraid I was following the ball uh, I saw, saw the linesman do something funny with his flag I've never seen that before he put his flag up and then he tried to sort of cover like put it down as if he hadn't um, waved it but the, it was too late for the referee who'd seen it and gave the, the free kick and He's running someone's name in his book. Um, so I don't know who's There's a substitution. Paolino leaving the field. Uh, he's had a good game. Anthony Paolino. Um, you'd have to suggest that maybe he's uh, he's run out of legs. And uh, being being replaced by Graham Fife, who's been out for quite some time with injury. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how sharp Graham Fife is. 
not they're not waiting to find out. They've played the ball straight to him. And uh, his first contribution is to have a shot at goal. Well, that's a positive. That's a positive for Redlands. Hayden names. Newell. Eames. And that's come off uh, McAvoy. Danny Byrne goes around Jeske. Danny Byrne puts it across and cleared at the far post by Brisbane Wolves. Draper. The reshuffle will be Draper going back to right back and then uh, Fife uh, being one of the three midfielders. Well, Fife's come on and he's uh, immediately started looking for the ball, getting plenty of touches, looking reasonably sharp for a man who hasn't played for a number of weeks. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. Well done by, uh, I do believe, that's Morales out there against Saeed. Uh, any sort of mistake there and there was an easy cross for the Redlands player. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a special guest, Blanche. We've got... Um We've got Joe Fennick coming up to have a word. We've got um, we've got special guests. We've got special guests in the commentary box, which ha looks a lot like the sport scoreboard here at the Cleveland Showgrounds. Welcome, Joe Fennick, coach of Turinga Rovers, to the commentary box. We'll just wait to uh, have a chat with you, Joe. We've got a corner being swung in from the right by Redlands and uh, dealt with, kind of. Um, with an appeal, an allowed appeal by the Redlands players for a handball of uh, Keith Armstrong. Joe, uh, what are your thoughts on the game so far? Uh, you know, Wolves having one of the tightest, uh, meanest defences in, in the league, uh, I think it's going to be pretty hard to break down now with, against against uh, a short manned Redlands outfit. But to their credit, Redlands have, haven't given up, still going well. Danny Burns having a great game. So, yeah, look, it's not over till it's over. And, um, ooh, good effort. That was a good strike, that. Um, what we do have, I suppose, is with uh, Fife coming on and being very, very uh, positive, is that hopefully that will lift the rest of the Redland side and uh, they will uh, rally and try and come back into this game. Yeah, absolutely. Joe, I like your opinion on, um, you know, this is the first time Wolves have had Nicola back since uh, the early stages of the season. Uh, it's looking uh, like it's uh, settled up the it's quite a lot. Of it's ominous for, uh, it's, it's going to be ominous for the teams that Wolves are going to meet in the next couple of weeks because he's only going to get better and better. The uh, Parish defusing a situation there. Hayden names and they're giving the ball away to McAvoy, who returns the favour. Um, pretty sloppy play there from both sides. Ball finally by Newell, hoofed clear, and uh, McCooler, who we're just talking about, has uh, headed clear. Joe, we were just saying um, how um, the Wolves probably uh, don't have to lift too much to win this game, but uh, there's the expectation of their coach, which needs to be set higher above what, what is necessary to win this game. Uh, he wasn't playing um, some uh, at a high level. I think we'd say... Ball coming across! Goal! Brisbane Wolves! Not sure, was it Joby Thorogood with his second of the night? I do believe it is. Or is it? It's a referee's sheet. I think both Beck and Vroom uh, slid in. It'll be interesting to see who claims it. Uh, although Stefan Vroom, I think, from his body shape, I think he's claimed it. We'll soon. We'll find out after the game. Three nil to Brisbane Wolves with Redlands missing a man. Don't like to call them early, but I can't see Redlands coming back from here. Joe, yeah, it'll be very difficult now, but. Um you know, with uh, with Wolves now settled at the back, Mikula will have some, some more chance to settle in at the back and they'll just play the ball out and uh, Redlands will have to come out and have to want to chase something, so we might see a few more goals. We may very well, and uh, m my fear at the moment is that Redlands can throw everything at them. I'm not sure that Redlands have got enough to break down a tight Wolves defence. But they're going to they're gonna have an opportunity here with the corner being slung in. A good corner indeed. Houghton, Houghton unchallenged, uh, takes that ball, Evie. And uh, Nevin Soroya, I think, out of desperation, um, falling down on the lightest of touches and looking for a penalty. Ball through to Lions, just a little bit too much. Yeah, Blanche, I was just going to say, Soroya needs to be careful because he's on a yellow card and that looked like a blatant dive to me. 
It certainly did, and um, I think it was treated that way by the referee, and maybe a word was said in, in uh, Nevin's ear. To Redland's credit, though, they haven't they haven't gone into their shell. They look like they want to still come out and attack. Uh, they're going to have to to get three goals. I mean, they're going to have to score four to win this, and that's going to be a turnaround of form of some meteoric uh, proportions. Well, I can tell you, uh, we were three nil up uh, against Redlands, and they came back to four three. So um, you know, whilst it's it's a different proposition here today, uh, I don't discount anything. But look, um, I think it's going to be hard for Redlands here. Good ball. Houghton's going to have to get there quickly and does and uh, good goalkeeping by Andrew Houghton he backed himself and uh, got there with confidence uh, Tom Lyons putting good pressure on we've got Hayden Eames looking for the ball wanting to get this underway quickly It's uh, it's uh, it's all slowed down here a little bit now. I'm not sure if the uh, stark reality for Redlands is starting to to sink in that they're um, they're going to have to do something well, very very special to uh, even get a point out of this game, which I don't think is going to happen. I uh, I want to know why uh, Ramon Close was uh, taken off. I mean, other than the fact that the, the goalkeeper was sent off, so they had to remove a player. Uh, but it'll be interesting if it was because of injury or or maybe form. I spoke to Ramon before I came up here, and uh, he was a little disappointed with his performance. But, but then again, uh, Ramon, he's uh, he's a bit of a perfectionist, and unless it's uh, you know a great display, he's never satisfied. Well, he's got. He He's a quality player, and um, I think he's probably the first to admit that he's uh, not in form at the moment, not in his best form. Uh, we'll just go to the play, and Parrish has, well, he's played a difficult ball back to his keeper, where the keepers had to head the ball, I believe, he just in case that was a pass back. I thought, uh, I thought he passed it back with his head, so, um, I yeah, I think the keeper showing a bit of nerves, um, having been introduced um, as he was. Yeah, Jared O'Neill... Um, no, in... in um, and uh, that looks like a long... <laughs> long distance goal to um okay. oh, I'm not sure who scored that uh, uh, from McAvoy I, I do believe um, we'll just confirm that in a second I think Sam's going to be uh sort of preparing for the uh, cup game against Olympic on on Tuesday now. Yeah, David McAvoy replaced by Alex Janoski. Um, again, another attacking move by Wolves. They're not going to uh, sit back and uh, just say 3 nils enough. I think they're going to go and uh, try and put the sword to Redlands, uh, which, well, is Wolves' way. They don't, they don't stop uh, just because they've got it won. They never have. I can't see them doing that now. Uh, this will be interesting. Reardon, and yeah, well shepherded out by, uh, by Reardon, and uh, again, Houghton in the Wolves' goal. Very safe and confident in, uh, in his box and around it. Yeah, absolutely. 4-0 uh, here, um, and Redlands now, it's just about confidence, about giving something that they can work towards in the next game. Yes, um, so for those who have just come back, it's 4-0 uh, to Brisbane Wolves with uh, the sending off of Mitch O'Brien in the Redlands goal for a second bookable offence, which we believe was handling outside the area. And uh, that's brought them down to 10 men. They're all, and this could, be, uh, this could be a card you would suggest as well for Evan Parrish. Uh, yeah, yellow card. <coughs> Don't know why he did that. Um, maybe a little bit of frustration, I think. Yeah, oh, I think he didn't want it to be 5 0. Um, uh, very rarely you actually see a, a keeper get sent off for two bookable offences. You normally either a straight red, and, and you could have, um, you know, it probably shows the frustration um, with the current run that the keeper face, that the keeper fell. Ball's lobbed in. Soroya with a good clearance. Jeski. 
Reardon. Plenty of options, and well, doesn't he's had too many options? He's played and he's played it out for a throw-in. Uh, it happens, I suppose. Uh, sometimes we're just confronted with too many, too many uh, options at one time. It's a metaphor for life, Matthew. I don't know. I never seem to have any options. So I'm <laughs> maybe I'm not. Maybe. And we've got in and uh, young the young reserve keeper has come out and uh, done well. He's handled that well. Hopefully his uh, the nerves he showed. For, oh, that's a great ball. And Tom Lyons has made an absolute brilliant run. And once again, Andrew Houghton in the Wolves goal is nearly the second sweeper. Yeah, well, he is a second he sweeper. Is. I was going to say they've got a back five. He is. He's coming off his line really well. He's anticipating everything really well. That's a great ball at the uh, Saeed. I think Houghton's been a really good acquisition. And, uh, oh, that, uh, well, Fife at the far post. Uh, not the tallest of players going from strength to strength, playing, playing a lot more confidence week to week. Very much so. I think it's going to be, like I said earlier, ominous for the teams that are due to face Wolves because, um, you know, they haven't been playing to their full potential in my view. I think Sam will agree with that. So, and they've been getting results. So just imagine when they really click. They could, um, I suppose Wolves support is looking to go on here. We've got uh, Danny Byrne across the Lions. Lions! Oh, Fantastic goal by Tom Lyons. That's um, Andrew Houghton, absolutely no chance. The perfect response, the perfect response from the uh, Redlands side. That, well, we're probably 20 minutes, I suppose, left in the game. Something along those lines. Uh, Another another four goals, Joe. Do you think though to win it? Um, it's going to be difficult, but for all those people watching on the uh, on the net, stay tuned because it's not over yet. Yeah, and, and that's the sort of that's the sort of thing that can help you. Maybe not in this game, but in the games that are coming on, like Tom Lyons getting a goal, good work from Redlands, and um, it's the little things you need to cling to when when you're down in, in the run that the Redlands are in. Yeah. <laughs> They need to do now is consolidate and continue to go forward, and um, and uh, it will be uh, it will be some positives to take out of the game. What they don't want to do now is lose concentration and concede another. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank Joe for Joe Fennick for joining us, and um, he's obviously um, a football nut like us, and gets out to every venue as uh, however cold it, it is. Yes, I'd like to thank Joe Fennick, coach of Turinga Rovers, for his uh, his impromptu uh, commentary. It's uh, it's good to see people dropping in and uh, giving us in, gi giving us some different points of view from uh, with different qualifications. Tom Lyons putting a lot of pressure on. Makula does enough. Hacks the ball clear and. We're, st well, we're still looking at the attaching move. Ball clipped across, and uh, well, dealt with, dealt with by the Redlands defence. But uh, uh, it's looking a bit shaky at the back for the home side. Yeah, great cross there by Alex Jovanovski, who's just come on. Nakula, Reardon, and uh, well, well done, well done by Newell. Janowski uh, putting that ball out for another corner. Uh, young Newell for Redlands has played well tonight and continuing to. Soroya, Newell down the left, plays it in for Hayden Eames. It's better football from Redlands. Parrish, Eames, well done Hayden Eames. Brilliant play and a fantastic ball. What a touch by Danny Byrne. Could this be the second one for Redlands? Cuts across, shoots! It's a post! Danny Byrne, what a fantastic strike. All the luck, none of, none of the luck going Redlands' way. And that cross just over here for Tom Lyons. What a fantastic play, piece of play from Redlands and especially Danny Byrne. Redlands need Hayden Eames to step up now. He just showed what he can do and he shows it in bits and pieces throughout the season so far. Needs to do that a bit more consistently and Redlands have got a great serve, lots of service. We've got another substitution. We've got uh, Nathan Reardon being replaced by uh, Christian, Waters. Christian Waters. And uh, this looks like 
a straight a straight swap by the looks of it. Um, again, this could be giving players a little bit of time, uh, getting them coming back from injury. Don't know much about Christian Waters. Uh, haven't seen him play. This may very well be his first game. I think I've seen him play this season. Yeah, me too. I thought it was a housing development on the north side. <laughs> ah, it's good to be clever. And uh, but. Uh, Good battling there, and uh, gets gets a free kick for his. Uh, Cameron Cameron Draper gets a free kick for his uh, for his trouble there. He battled hard. Ball played long by Paul McCoola. And uh, ooh, Stephen Vroom lurking down the outside there, looking for the touch. Uh, still coming back, looking at Draper. Cameron Draper, always safe. Uh, the ball for Waters with a, ooh, a risky head back. And confident in his own ability to reach his keeper. Don't know that he knew that Danny Byrne was lurking that close. Overconfidence, maybe. <laughs> Oh, and uh, no, that's not offside. Well, okay. Um, it is offside. But that was borderline. And that was uh, very close. I'm going to call that so close it wasn't offside. But uh, harder, yeah. easy for me to call. I don't have to make those decisions. But I thought Danny Byrne was, at, was level at best. Or worst, I should say. Wolves still playing with good possession. Vroom cuts inside, cuts great switch out to Waters. Waters, uh, the touch of someone who's just come on the park, I'll say. Yeah, he, he wants to have a few warm-ups before, um, before putting in a cross like that. He had you, um, Janowski, who came on, put in a fantastic cross just after he'd come on. Um, but uh, yeah, Redland's looking okay, and Wolves seem to have um, taken their foot off the gas a little bit. I think Wolves um, have are now of the belief they've got the game won. Um, I'm not sure, at, you know, at four-one, I suppose they're very they they they've got a right to think like that. But I think uh, Sam Safe would like them to finish their game off as strongly as they started it and uh, show no mercy uh, as is as is Sam's way. Yeah, I think they'll be disappointed to have conceded. I think the um, you know the, the back line coming together and they would have liked the, the shutout or the, or the uh, duck egg or whatever whatever you want to call it. Saroy does well against uh, Beck. That uh, that'll be a physical battle that both of them will be feeling tomorrow morning. I'm sure. Yeah, um, Beck's been holding it up all game and that's been, that's been the game plan that's worked uh, and that's what they've had to do without uh, Klulo and Radulovic. Well up by, um, would have nearly thought that for Stefan Vroom to stay that long in the air that he must have been holding on to something but apparently not and uh, it's a Wolves corner. The, uh, I think it's Armstrong, Armstrong wandering across to the, uh, wandering up to the far corner to uh, take the corner, swing it in for Wolves, again Wolves very good on the set moves, ball comes in and oh, uh, Evan, Evan Parrish with a, um, a timely interception there, Lions, Lions does well to hold that up and keep possession, Parrish, Saeb, out to Burn, Danny Burns come into this second half a little bit more now and uh, that's a good thing that's a good thing for Redlands. He, he's been a thing from Graham Fife's in, introduction a lot. I think, I think the whole team is. Yeah, I think Fife has lifted the side. Uh, we wondered if that would happen, and it has. Draper, Fife. Fife cuts in. Back out to Cameron Draper. And that could well be, and is, a corner to Redlands. Good build-up play from the home side. And uh, just to recap, it is... Uh, 4-1 to Brisbane Wolves here in the Round 12 catch-up match at Cleveland Showgrounds. Brisbane Wolves wearing their alternate strip of white with blue trim and Redlands United in the all-red. Ball swung in for Redlands and, well, again, into the safe hands of Andrew Houghton, uh, unchallenged. Hayden Eames picks the ball up, goes around Armstrong. Cameron Draper out to Fife. Fife. Lays it down the line for Draper. Draper 
Snicks it in. Well, it shouldn't have, but it got past Morales. Draper with another chance. Five. Five shoots. And wasn't far off the target. And again, uh, positive play from the Redland side. I was thinking in the build-up to Redland's goal how um, when you're down to 10 men, you, it sometimes brings out the best in you. And I, I think that's because, you, you know, you don't have much leeway with your passing. Your passing has to be crisp. It has to be to feed. And, um, and that's certainly been the case uh, in the last 10 minutes. Is Redland's uh, passing has been better. And... Um, I think that can help confidence coming into the next game. I think what, what will hurt them will be Mitch O'Brien's loss. Um, if you're talking uh, Redlands, uh, you know, in, in relegation trouble uh, at the moment. Oh, and Thoroughgood's uh, got onto a wayward pass and cut it back in. And, uh, and it is, oh, just past the post by... Um, uh, I was worried there that Thoroughgood hadn't seen uh, hadn't seen Jeski make that run. He had. He just did a very good um, impression of someone who hadn't, so they could then feed it it through. You know, look away pass. I think they call it. Uh, Makula, and uh, he's given the ball away. Paul Makula. I think possibly starting to feel the effects of uh, not playing constantly for the past few weeks. Maybe just starting to get a little bit a little bit tired. I believe. Yeah, I just wonder whether um, whether Sam will change it and, and give Mikula a rest and maybe put Chris Beck back at centre half for the uh, remainder of the game. But um, not seeing any movement of that at the moment. I suppose you've got to weigh it up. He, in a game that he would consider already won, I suppose he wants to run him for the 90 minutes to get that under his belt because he's got some hard games coming up in the coming weeks. He has. He's been critical to uh, Wolves' uh, recovery since 2007 when he, he transferred from Mitchelton. Yes, he, um, and the ball swung across and uh, down low was Morales to uh, get rid of that. Hayden Eames, again, Hayden Eames needs to be spraying balls around as he, as he can. That's a, that's a fantastic ball. That's a fantastic through to burn. And oh, that's, at the end of the day, that is a wasted opportunity for the uh, Redlands side. Uh, Danny Byrne in that situation. Yeah, great ball through from Eames. Uh, well worked from Danny Byrne to find the space. The only problem is, is he forced himself to hit an off-balance shot. If he'd have kept his balance, I think it'd be 4-2. Uh, positive signs for the, Red, uh, for the Redlands uh, coaching staff. Uh, as much as I'll be unhappy with the uh, result and probably the first half of the game, uh, the question, I suppose, is why can't we play like this for 90 minutes? Yeah, and maybe um, that's uh, that's down to you know Fife's introduction, his creativity. He's their playmaker, um, and um, they've tried a different they've tried different things when he's not been here. Um, and now he's uh, going to get a good 40 minutes under his belt, and uh, that bodes well for for the rest of their season. Well, they they seem a far a far brighter and uh, more positive side with Ian Fife on the park. Uh, we wondered about that on his inclusion earlier and uh, well he's answered the question for us he's um, he's looked most likely or been at the beginning of Redland's better moves I think with Russell Woodruff gone for the season I think uh, Danny Byrne and uh, Tom Lyons want to concentrate on be being forward players and without five they were forced into being creative um, and so I think that helps them a lot Jeski's um, Jeski's hit that out for a goal kick. Uh, sorry, for a throw in on this near side. Um, we have another substitution uh, for Brisbane Wolves, number seven for Wolves. Uh, Romano, Claudio Romano is replacing uh, Chris Beck and would suggest that this is a like-for-like like change in position. We'll soon find out. Claudio Renano uh, don't know much about uh, Romano, to tell you the truth. Uh, we'll try and get some uh, some information and stats on him shortly. I, I don't know that he's played a lot of games this year either. Yeah, I think Sam wanted him to warm up and said, Romano, Romano, wherefore art thou, Romano? <laughs> Oh dear, and um, that's why we have expert commentators because they can think of such things whilst the game's on. And uh, a touch forward, and oh, Stefan Vroom, had he been able to control that, was in on goal and uh, could have very well been the sixth, fifth, sorry, for the Willem or Dingalpa based side. 
Oh, Jeski. No, no, they do. I've been around for a long time. Uh, Waters. With well, with a disappointing, disappointing and wasteful ball. Uh, Newell with the throw in. Lions coming short. Danny Byrne, uh, well defended. Paul McCoola. Armstrong. Morales. Wakefield back to Morales. This will go to McCoola. McCoola will just lay this out to Waters. You would think, maybe, maybe not. Uh, Jeski. Now this is a good flowing bit of play. That's Armstrong. Romano. Romano with his first touch of the game. Lays it across for Armstrong who plays it across. Soroya clears it but only as far as uh, Janoski. And uh, Tom Lyons back in defence for the uh, for the Redland side. Yeah, Wolves um, putting together a nice string of passes and, and using and creating a uh, gap with, with overlapping runs. Yeah. Newell plays the ball long. Uh, that's, again, a wasted ball, and that's just going to come back. Well, for anything, it's going to give uh, Wolves a chance to set themselves up again and uh, come forward in possession. McCooler. Great ball out to Romano, whose first touch, oh, well, good challenge, Cameron Draper. Uh, he had no right to win that, and did, and plays a great ball to Graham Fife. Fife with a little bit of space out on the far side. And uh, still going, Graham Fife. Plays it to Hayden Neems. Looks to get it back, and does get it back on his right foot. Looks for the back heel, and doesn't quite come off. Vroom, Romano, and uh, Claudio Romano unable to give that ball back to Stefan Vroom, which would have seen him in acres of space in behind the Redlands defence. Good switch of play, out to Janoski, Waters out on the overlap, well done, good, good possession, Vroom. Armstrong out the waters. Oh, he's got his head up and had a look before it's arrived. Um, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Yeah, it's a nervy performance from Waters, who's come on. Um, but I think you can um, you can take that uh, four-one up, and uh, it gives him a uh, playing uh, first team uh, chance. So th this is the time to make mistakes. Well, I suppose it is. And uh, thorough good. And uh, oh, that's a very late flag from the referee's assistant. He's, um, I'm not sure if he's right or if he's wrong, but he's been late with his calls, if I can say that, most of the night. Yeah, assistant, assistant uh, referees uh, seem to be now um, only putting the flag up as soon as the player touches the ball, even when it's uh, fairly obvious that they're running into it. And I think that, that thing gives you the impression that they've called it late. I think, um, I think I'm going to agree with you on that. And, uh, we, of course, we're not at a good angle from where we are to gauge those sorts of things, so we don't, we don't. Uh, Waters, well, good challenge with Tom Lyons, because Tom Lyons is a, a strong player in the air, good, good body shape for uh, the challenge, and Waters has won the, uh, Waters has got the uh, throw in, surprisingly, to myself. Q, new I should say, great touch with his chest, Hayden Neems, well done Eames, in for Lyons, uh, great, great touch by Tom Lyons. Plays it back, looks to play it back in across for Hayden Eames, but cut out by the Wolves' defence. Cameron Draper puts a good ball into the box. McCoola uh, with a comfortable header. Ball played forward again. Looking for those inside channels and uh, being picked up quite easily by the Redlands defence. Yeah, Wolves playing very direct at the moment and... Um and maybe uh, that doesn't need to be the case. They can sort of keep the ball and enjoy possession because Redlands will have to work to get it off. Well, the whole, all, both sides were at that stage when that ball was played. We're all in one quarter of the field, and I think the secret to really getting into Redlands tonight—that's a—that's um, an interesting decision by the referee. Uh, I, I don't know why it would take so long to call that one. Um, there's something. Obviously, he's seen that we haven't taken into account. Yeah, I think um, 
I think we, we said it earlier in the first half. He, he was calling a lot of that. Any sort of any contact is is blown. I think he's had actually a, a pretty good game. He, like you said in the first half, he's not really done anything that uh, has, has impacted the game. I think um, I think the goalkeeper's two uh, yellow cards were probably deserved. So um, Ames. And uh, yeah, look, the referee hasn't made any decisions which has influenced the outcome of the match. And from a referee's point of view, if they, if they do that, then yes, they're going to get some of the smaller decisions right, some of them wrong. And uh, that's the way it is. Good challenge there by uh, Evan Parrish. He's won the ball back. Danny Byrne. Sorry, it wasn't Danny Byrne. It was Hayden Eames. And Hayden Eames, again, since the introduction, Janoski. Joby Thorogood and uh, defended well by Nevin Soroya and cleaned up by uh, young uh, Newell. Oh, Danny Boone! I think I think he brought. I think he uh, he won that penalty or won that free kick quite well. Yeah. Uh, Danny Byrne asking the question there: How come it's only uh, the Redland side that are getting the yellow cards? He uh, thought that was well deserving of um, of being uh, of, uh, deserving some colour. I think he uh, he went looking for that free kick, and I think that might have been spotted by the referee somehow. He, he let it run across his body and, and drew the foul. With, uh, Nevin Soroya has uh, decided to leave the free kick where it is so that he can uh, make his way forward and uh, Hayden Eames who has uh, come to life as I said before since the inclusion of Graham Fife plays the ball forward and uh, t- straight to Nevin Soroya and uh, out comes again Andrew Houghton to defuse the centre out to rolls it to Waters there's a chance to play a good ball forward and does the Joby Thoroughgood and continues his run we're coming to the end of the game and um, Wolves having uh, wrapped up the, the win uh, been, been uh, much the better side I think during this game ball crossed and well defended by Redlands and uh, yes uh, 4-1 Danny Byrne 4-1 to the away side uh, Danny Byrne down here on the left you've got uh, Drew Jeske uh, coming across and defusing that situation Andrew Houghton to give Redlands credit, they've, they've kept working all this second half. They certainly have. They, they haven't given in, and that, that, the, the coaching staff will take great positives from that, and the side should take positives from that as well. Now, uh, ball thrown out to Cameron Draper, who, and there is full time here at the Cleveland Showgrounds, uh, which sees Brisbane Wolves 4, uh, Redlands Devils 1. And I'd like to thank uh, Stuart Flint, the uh, editor of yourbpl.com and my co-host for tonight and uh, we will uh, be back next week Stuart with some uh, more commentary of live matches from the Vito Premier League Thanks, Sam 4-1 victory here at the Cleveland Showgrounds Uh, good result Uh, but you didn't seem super pleased with your way the side played on occasions Uh, on occasions uh, yeah we made the wrong decisions at the wrong time but to come here with Four to five players uh, out sick and injured. Uh, I've got to be happy. 4-1 is uh, a resounding victory in uh, in any uh, terms. We've come here with uh, five reserves, three on the bench uh, and two uh, playing. And we've uh, got away with uh, a 4-1 victory. So I'm, I'm very happy to, uh, to come here. It could have easily uh, have backfired. But I thought even with uh, some of the second string, we were too good for them. Paul McCooler making his uh, full comeback a bonus. Uh, noticed he played for the 90 minutes, so I'm supposing trying to get some game time under his belt after a lengthy break. Yeah, he's been out for probably eight weeks uh, and we've done very well uh, to get the results we have without him because he's quality. Uh, he had half an hour last week, he played 90 minutes today and he'll play 90 minutes on Tuesday. Uh, and 90 minutes hopefully the following Saturday if he don't get injured and then he should be somewhere back towards uh, his best. But our season seems to be going from getting two back and then two go out. So uh, we, we've still uh, a long way to go. And like I said, once we get everybody fit, uh, if we get everybody fit, we'll be uh, a side that uh, can do damage to most teams. A couple of players there that we haven't seen too much this year in Waters and in uh, Claudio Romano? Yeah, both of them are young boys from the reserves. Alex Janoski uh, is a reserve. 
Chris Beck is first team but reserve uh, bench player at the start today. So there's four players uh, uh, there that uh, if we had a full squad would be playing reserve team football. And that's no disrespect to them, but it shows you uh, the quality that we've got in the reserves and all. They've stepped up uh, in the first team, they've stepped up off the bench and uh, done themselves uh, uh, justice. I think uh, this is second half of the season so far is going along according to plan uh, for yourselves. Uh, third place I think that would put you into or very close to. Yeah, it's, we're in third place uh, on uh, goal difference, we, where we want to be. That's uh, round one, uh, end of round one game and uh, we, we wanted to be in the top six. Obviously uh, uh, no one's going to catch uh, Rochdale but I think it'd be a dogfight uh, for second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Uh, and then a dogfight for the bottom bottom eight, in which this club's are, uh, in a real dogfight down there. All right, thank you for talking to me uh, at the, on a chilly night at the Cleveland Showgrounds, and um, I'm sure I'll catch up with you around the grounds over the coming weeks. Yep, thank you, Valencia. 4-1 loss, Peter, uh, again. Uh, patches, the lads played really well, uh, but again, played without luck. Mitch O'Brien sent off for two yellow cards. Neither of them were clear-cut cards in uh, my view from the commentary box. I know you, you don't want to comment too much upon that, but uh, certainly your position on the table, uh, your side's playing with the luck that's usually attributed to that. Yeah, you've, you've just about covered it really, Blanchy. Um, I was really pleased with the lads. I was proud of their effort tonight. I mean, we didn't lie down for the 90 minutes. We kept going to the end. <clears throat> we played well with the 10 men. The game opened up a little bit and we scored a terrific goal. Um, I feel really disappointed for them, you know. We just need a break, or that's the way I feel anyway. People might hold different opinions. But, um, you know, I'll not comment on the referee and people can make their own opinion about that. But I tend to agree with the winning president over one of the decisions. Um, so, you know, I'm sure there's assessors here that will assess his performance and it's up to them. The inclusion of <clears throat> Graham Fife, Fife seemed to lift the side uh, across the field. Everyone seemed to become a little bit more perky, a bit more positive. Uh, I don't know if it was just because the playmaker's back on the park or because he does things which make, brings other players in. Oh, he's certainly a big influence in our side and we, we ummed and ahed whether to actually start him for, for that reason. Um, but it wasn't to be, um, you know, we, we took the cautious approach and who knows, you know, whether it was the right decision or not in the end. Um, but as I say, I, I, I couldn't fault the lads really tonight, you know, I can pick things obviously, but in terms of effort, um, I'm pleased with them. I think we've something to build on now. There's a lot of spirit there. There's a lot of positive, there was a lot of positives for us. I mean... <laughs> It might sound a bit strange, 4-1 down and yeah. there's positives, but there were. Uh, when you did go to 10 men, you seemed to lift. As I said, the inclusion of um, Graham Fife seemed to lift the side's attacking ability and the side looked like they wanted to go forward and he went forward with purpose. Well, yeah, exactly. But, you know, you can look at the game and look at all kinds of little incidents. I mean, we had to put the young goalkeeper on 17, first time game, and he gets a couple of hard breaks. Um, and credit to the kid, he kept going and make a couple of good catches and saves. Um, but we've just got to get on with it, pure and simple, you know. It's no good bemoaning our luck or looking to apportion blame or uh, looking too deeply into things as some coaches tend to do. Um, we, we'll just work, keep working at it. Well, I'd like to thank you for uh, speaking to us after the, after the game here. A bit chilly at uh, the Cleveland Showgrounds tonight, but, um, and I'm sure I'll be speaking to you over the coming weeks. Well, it was getting a little bit hot under the collar, so I didn't really feel the chill, but yes, thank you.